Hello, this is Tom from October CMS, and this is an introduction to the October CMS template engine and themes. In the simplest case, a theme directory can contain just a single HTML file for the home page, but more often, themes include multiple files for pages, partials, layouts, content files, and assets. Page, partial, and layout files are called CMS templates. Since October CMS themes are file-based, you can edit them with your favorite code editor, like Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text. But if you are just starting learning October CMS, we recommend using the built-in editor because it provides inline documentation and IntelliSense features specific to October CMS. Let's start a new theme from scratch. You can create themes on the settings slash front-end theme page. Click on the Create a new blank theme button. Enter the new theme name and click Create. Don't forget to make the theme active using the Activate button. Again, that is the same as creating a subdirectory in the Themes directory. As you can see, the platform has created the theme directory and also initialized several common subdirectories for storing CMS templates. Now that I have a new, empty theme, let's go to Editor and create a home page for our future website. For all pages, we must provide a title and a URL. As it's going to be a home page, I'll use the forward slash as the URL. For the page content, I will paste an HTML5 scaffold markup. That's enough for the first step. Let's save the page and see if it works. It definitely works. Now, October CMS uses Twig as a template language. Twig is a flexible, fast, and secure template engine for PHP. Let's use the magic of Twig to output the current date and time on our homepage. Twig includes many useful tags and filters. October CMS extends Twig with just a handful of platform-specific tags. We like to keep things simple. By the way, October CMS-specific Twig tags are described in the documentation. Now I'll create another page and show an example of an October CMS specific Twig filter. I want the home page to have a link to the About page that I just created. The page filter here is specific to October CMS. It generates a URL of a page. Let's see if it works. How cool is that? October CMS can do much more than that. Page URLs can have parameters, and the page filter can take parameter values to generate parameterized links. But that is beyond the scope of this tutorial and described in the documentation. Now, let's build something more interesting using Twitter Bootstrap. In its simplest form, Twitter Bootstrap requires a CSS file to be referred to in the page's head section. I can add that link tag to both of my existing pages, but there's a better way, called layouts. Layouts are CMS templates that define the structure of a page. Instead of repeating common page elements such as reference to resources, headers, and footers, you can put them to a layout. Let me show you how it works. Now add the Bootstrap CSS link, and the last step, I need to indicate where to render the actual page. October CMS has a special tag for it, called page. Don't confuse the page tag that outputs the page content in a layout with the page filter that returns a page URL. Almost done, but one thing is missing. I need to output the page title in the layout's title tag. I can do it by using the global page variable provided by October CMS. You can find more information about it in the markup guide. Okay, I have the page scaffold defined in the layout, and now I can simplify my existing pages. I'm removing everything that is already defined in the layout and updating the page settings to use the new layout. Let's see if it still works. It works! If I preview the page source, I can see that the layout markup wraps the page content. This is exactly what I wanted. And the link to Bootstrap CSS works too, at least 
It should. Let me check. Yup, Bootstrap CSS works, although the page doesn't look nice. Let's add a Bootstrap header. I copied the header markup from the Bootstrap website, and now I can paste it into the layout. Let's see if it works. It works, and both of my pages now display the header. The layout code can become complicated. Imagine if we added a footer and other possible elements that are common for all pages. We can reduce the complexity of the layout by moving the header markup to a partial. Partials are another type of October CMS templates. You can use partials to simplify your code, like in that example. You can also use partials to efficiently reuse code in multiple places and to make AJAX requests that update the page contents. Now I want to create a partial for the header and move the header markup from the layout to the new partial. And the last step is to render that partial in the layout. Let's see if it works. It definitely works, and the layout markup is simple again. One thing that annoys me is that the active menu item doesn't change when I navigate between the pages. I can quickly fix it using Twig and the global page variable. I'll use the page ID property, which in the simplest case matches the page file name without the extension. Great, it works as expected. The last thing that bugs me is that I don't want to rely on an external style sheet file. Let's move it to the theme's assets directory. I already downloaded the file, and now I can create the CSS directory and upload the file. I'll now replace the external style sheet link with the local file, using the October CMS theme filter that creates a fully qualified URL. Okay, testing the update. It works. Now I would like to briefly demonstrate the CMS components feature. It's a broad topic, and for now, I just want to show you how easy extending a page with CMS components is. I'll use the RainLab blog plugin to create a page displaying a list of blog categories. RainLab blog is a free plugin available on the October CMS marketplace. It has great documentation. First, let me create a couple of categories in the blog plugin. I will now create a new page and call it Blog Categories. Here's the interesting part. I'll drop the Blog Categories CMS component into the editor. That's all I need to display the list of categories. Let's see if it works. It doesn't display any categories, and I know why. That's because my blog categories are empty. Fortunately, the blog categories CMS component is configurable, and I can force it to display empty categories. Now, all categories are displayed, although they all refer to the About page. To fix it, I'd need to create a blog category page, but I don't want this tutorial to be too long. You can check the RainLab blog documentation for details. CMS components are very flexible. They are not only configurable with Inspector. You can also overwrite the HTML markup they generate. There are several ways to do it, and the simplest one is to expand component partial and edit the markup in place. Now that I have the theme, I can export it to a zip file. This normally isn't needed, as you can manage your themes with Git, but you may want to export your theme from the October CMS demo installation. To export the theme, go to the settings slash frontend theme page, click Manage, and then Export. That will download the theme zip file that you can then import into your installation of October CMS. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let us know in the comments if you want to see more tutorials like this and what topics you'd like us to cover. Thanks for watching.